I'm Ference Gregor of Sobraz Studio, and over the past three decades we have completed thousands of works in stone, bone, natural materials, and more. From private commissions to the carving of the National Cryptologic Memorial, and now we're going to bring you in to see how it's done. Studio Arts Carving. The Javan Hawk Eagle and the Karambit Blade both have a very deep rooted history in Indonesia, so we thought they'd make a great pair together. The Eagle is the national bird of Indonesia, and the Javan Hawk Eagle is nearly extinct. Depicted in many forms through a traditional history, such as Garadu, the man bird, accredited to the constellation Aquila. And the karambit began as a very simple farming tool, yet evolved to become the weapon of kings. We have a nice large karambit blade that Ilya from Baltimore Knife and Sword has hand forged for us for this project. And we're going to select material based on a few different factors. Some of the things we want to consider when we're selecting material are going to be the size, the shape, and the form of the material. Warthog tusks do not have a straight line arc, they curve back, so they're going to have that little twist near the end. We're going to need a good eight and a half inches measured on that outside curve, so we can stay proportionate with this blade and stay cohesive with our design. Other things that we do want to consider are going to be the structure and the condition. Here's your gum line. They're hollow up to this point and they start to close up into that interstitial zone, which is the nerve path, and they get very solid at the end. Now the warthogs use these for digging as well as defense. They're all going to carry some chipping, cracking, checking, and here is your flat spot where that bottom tusk is rubbing through the enamel or the cementum layer as it's called. We're going to work our design and our carving techniques in such a manner that we eliminate most of, if not all, of the cracking and checking. We're also going to work with these natural characteristics as they are part of the beauty of the warthog tusk. We begin by cutting down the tusk. However, we want to make sure that we leave ample material and keep proportionate with the size that we're going to need for this part. Next, we hit the sander. <coughs> we'll remove some of that outside staining and wear. We're also going to start profiling and tapering down the end of the stuff. This is going to give us a better idea of the structure inside where those cracks and checks are that we're going to be working with. You can see the difference between the color of the dentine and that bright white enamel. We can also take a better look at all the cracking and checking, so now we're going to get ready to carve. We'll begin to create different levels by using strokes that are cutting into the rotation of the bit. Carving is a process of subtraction so it's vital that we don't remove too much material too soon. Keeping with the same style bit, but graduating down in size, we're going to start removing material and forming the beak. This is going to raise the level of the sear. We'll go ahead and lower that profile of the cranial ridge. Just take a little off the top. That concave fluting you see on the side is very important. We're going to take advantage of that as we start the occipitals. Using the flat and the front edge of the bit, we're going to work together with the concave fluting on each side. This is going to help create that ever majestic brow line you see over the piercing eyes of raptors. For those of you who can stand it and don't want to hold your ears, Take a listen to just how lightly that we're actually working right now against the material. 
as we redefine that sear and the beef area. It's time to bring out my bulbs. We're going to do some refining, a little more contouring. Watch right here. That little bump is going to become very important for the eye sockets. Once again, we're going to use the same style bit and graduate down in size. We can get in and refine some of those tighter areas. We'll be playing musical bits throughout the carving, switching back and forth and utilizing the different shapes and aspects each one has throughout the project. Since I do what is called free float carving, where I don't put the material in a rigid base, my hands are always in contact with each other and or the material for support for better control. We'll start to go ahead and define some of these head feathers. These are very small and there's lots of them, so this is going to take a while. Let's speed it up just a little bit. We'll go ahead and carve in and lower the level of the nape, also along the back. This is going to help to raise those crest feathers off the head. It's time to hold those ears again, or not. Listen to just how lightly we're working here. You don't hear the RPM of the motor change. We'll be using the Krauss bit to carve in the mouth and to also undercut the feather works in fine areas to give them more definition. We'll be doing this throughout the entire carving and also coming back to this intermittently. Now these little guys are very fine, they're very sharp, and they're very delicate. So we have to work very patiently and very slow. They heat up very fast and fatigue. If you're not used to working with these types of fit, buy them by the case because you're going to need them. Okay, so we've done a lot of work on this carving since we've seen you last. We've blocked out, or roughed out if you will, a lot more of the feather work into the wings. We've contoured a whole lot, brought some more shape to it to give him a lot of motion as he's in flight. Those uh, crest feathers are starting to lift off the back, but we don't want to bring them up too high because in flight they would be laying flat, and we have to make sure that this is a comfortable ergonomic handle, not stuff poking way up high. We are going to start doing some detailing, get into the polishing phase and some of the finer finishing work, get into those eye sockets, set the eyes. We've already started detailing a little bit on this side as you can see. And we're going to show you how we do that. The rockus or shaft is that bony line that runs up through the middle of the feather. We can create this by carving two parallel lines to give it definition. We want to be careful these lines do not intersect. The vein of the feather are the two parts on each side of the rockus or the shaft. We want to create singular lines not overlapping and cross-hatching lines. We're going to put some breaks in between. This is going to show those feathers have been opened up from motion. As we'll be repeating this process over and over and going back in and redefining even finer lines to these feathers with smaller bits, we're going to show you on a larger scale 
by doing one of the primaries now. We will be carving in both directions, however this is still a pick up your pencil technique. We want consistent lines on both sides of the feather. Again, we'll tighten things up with that Krauss bit, undercut some of those fine areas, and feather out some of the smooth ends. We'll be repeating this process over and over throughout the carving. Now it's time to take on setting the eyes. The eye socket will be created in that raised area that we made with the ball bit earlier. We'll begin with a straight cutter and sink a parallel depth for our eye socket. At more acute angles, we'll start to really open up some space under that brow. We'll get in with a smaller bit, create more space up inside the lids. We'll slip him in on an angle and voila, the lid will wrap around and hold the eye. Now we can finish the detailing around the eye sockets, go back through the entire project once again, tighten everything up and move on to the sanding and polishing. We've already hand sanded up into the fine grits in preparation for the polishing wheel. This not only cuts down the time we'll need on the polishing wheel, but it's also going to allow us better control so we can keep a light pressure, get the surfaces polished, and avoid heating. Careful to stay off of the carved areas for now, we're still going to go in and tighten those up again. Smaller areas we're going to do with a felt wheel. Get into some of those tighter spots, those smaller areas. We're using a white rouge and gently going across the top and just highlighting the entire piece. We don't want to get too far in here, lose our definition, or cause burning. We've carved our guard, had it cast in bronze, used fossil walrus for a spacer, finished our carving in the warthog tusk, taken a finely hand forged blade formed our handle to the guard. We've taken all of our components and assembled them to create the Javon Hawk Eagle Karambit. We hope you've enjoyed this first edition of Carving Warthog Tusk in the Art Carving Series by Sobrass Studio. Stay tuned and subscribe for more educational videos and how you can win your own custom carved pendant to be featured in our Art Carving Series. Visit us on the web at www.sobras.com and like us on Facebook.